You know, I just wanted to say, props to Ethan Hawke. He's been in The Northman, Moon Knight, and now The Black Phone. He's having one hell of a year. Hello everybody and welcome to Film Street. In this video we're talking about The Black Phone, directed by Scott Derrickson, who previously made Doctor Strange, Sinister, and the really underrated The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Set in 1978, the story follows Finney Shaw a shy but clever 13-year-old boy who's been held in a soundproof basement by a sadistic mass killer. And when a disconnected phone on the wall starts ringing, he soon discovers that he can hear the voices of the killer's previous victims, who are dead set on making sure that what happened to them doesn't happen to Finney. This movie is the adaptation of a short story of the same name written by Joe Hill, who if you don't know who he is, he's a very successful writer who happens to be the son of another successful writer known as Stephen King. And that's a really cool fact to know. <laughs> because I didn't know anything about this story before watching the film, but when I learned that, it made complete sense. Because I remember that there were moments where I was like, this feels oddly familiar. And then I got it. This film and that story is very inspired by it, but not in a negative way. It's not trying to copy it, but the atmosphere and a lot of themes are very similar. The fear of the unknown, of talking to strangers, or the things that make you feel insecure when you were a kid, like abusive parents or bullying in school, and also the setting. And there's even an actual homage to it in this movie. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but when you see this movie, you'll know it. Because it was a really nice detail. <laughs> Just by the premise, this sounded really intriguing, but when I saw that Ethan Hawke was playing the killer, that made it even more interesting to me because I'm such an Ethan Hawke fan. And he was amazing. He did a really good job in this film and I like how his performance was mostly through the expression of his eyes, his mannerisms and his voice because for the better part of the film his face is covered with that mask and that's such a cool design for a mask. It's been a long time since we had a mask killer whose mask actually contributed to the film because the best part of this mask was that it had interchangeable parts that the killer use according to how he was feeling or how he wanted to torture his victims. So that was really clever because it actually contributed to Ethan Hawke's performance. And like I said, it's such a cool design. I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be a really popular Halloween costume this year or the next couple of years. But I gotta say that the real MVPs in this movie are Mason Thames and Madeline McGraw who played Finney and his sister Wen. Their characters felt fleshed out, they feel real and relatable. Wen is a no-nonsense girl who has a particular connection to his brother and it's the one that it's the most worried about him and the one that tries the hardest to find him. And Finney is not just a scary kid in a cell, he goes through his own journey way before he was kidnapped and when he's kidnapped he goes from different stages from fear to desperation from desperation to resolve from resolve to determination and for the entire movie you're rooting for this kid you want him to be safe and you want him to escape from that place and they did a really good job which I'm sure wasn't easy because these were really challenging roles, especially for child actors, and not just because of what they do in the film, but because the story basically revolves around them, so they had a really big responsibility with this film, but they really delivered. Something that needs to be addressed with this film is that it's more of a thriller than a horror film. It's more situational horror than straight-up horror, I know it has supernatural elements, but 
it doesn't rely on that to create cheap jump scares or to show excessive use of violence to create a scary atmosphere. That is created through the tension built in each scene. So when there is a jump scare, it feels earned. And believe me, there is one that had a really big response from the audience in the theater that I was in, and that is always a good sign. But like I said, this should be treated more like a thriller, because it's basically a survival story of a kid trying to do everything he can before he runs out of time. And that is really effective, because that's where the true elements of horror lies in this film. The supernatural elements are here to complement the story, but the true horror lies on how grounded it feels, because a supernatural creature is something that you see and you know it's not real, but a serial killer and a kidnapper it's different because that is real, because sometimes reality can be scarier than fiction. Another aspect that I really appreciate in this story is that the supernatural elements are kept ambiguous because this movie is not worried about setting up a sequel or a franchise, it's not worried about world building because it's focused on a more condensed story in which having those elements be more mysterious actually plays in their favor because it plays with the theme of the unknown and I really like that. In the end, the black phone was a welcome surprise. It's nice to see Scott Derrickson explore horror again. I think he picked a good story to develop a movie around it that was only enhanced by Mark Corbin's score and a great job by the sound editing team with amazing performances by Ethan Hawke, Mason Thames and Madeline McGraw. And I really hope you go see this movie in theaters. And that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this and if you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe and please let me know in the comments what's a horror movie that you think it's underrated. Like always, it's been my pleasure and I'll see you next time.